everybody, Richard again here from Electric Classic Cars, and it's time for a Testarossa to Teslarossa update. Let's get into it. So on the last episode, we were talking about uh, the fabricators have pretty much finished their job. I lied, because uh, if you remember, I kind of changed my mind a little bit. Oh, not changed my mind, I just come up with an idea, which was... Uh, to complicate things because we had the main battery box in the rear and we had the front battery box in the front. But when I looked at it, it was a little bit too high. It was about that high and it took up a little bit too much um, boot space or front space or front boot space, whatever you want to call it. And looking at where the petrol tanks went, which is kind of like just behind me, a midship, there was still lots of space. So I had the idea and I had to break it to the fabrication guys slowly um, to take the top layer of batteries out of this box and bring it down to this level and then kind of like come up with an idea as to fitting them in the space where the fuel tank went, which is what this is in front of you here. So now we have a pair of battery modules in there and a pair of battery modules in there. So essentially in there we'll go two batteries, another two batteries in there and what I'd like to do now is show you where this goes. But before I do that, I just want to show you what goes in there. So follow me. Right, batteries. So we've got the big battery pack over to my right hand side there. And the guys are, are busy doing the BMS looms and stuff over there. But I wanted to show you what we've done with the front battery pack. So uh, in total, there's 24 of these CALB modules and that's 61 kilowatt hours, uh, so a 61 kilowatt hour battery pack, but the front battery pack, it was all going to be so easy. We're just going to have one big battery pack in the rear, one in the front. And then I came along and ruined it because I just felt that this was too high and we lost too much luggage space. So what we've done is we've taken off this top layer of four modules and we've kind of split them out to two pairs and then the front battery packs battery pack is a lot shallower then. So I'm going to bring in my glamorous assistant, help me rearrange these, and you can see what we've actually done now. So now you can see what we've done. So we've taken that top layer off, split it into two pairs, and one pair will go in this box, and there's another one very similar to this, which the other pair will go into, and the remaining four will go in the front box. So these are one module, another module, and in between is a sandwich plate, which is the coolant plate, and then there's another pair over here and they're bolted together. And this one obviously goes in here. So if you imagine that sliding in there, and if I spin that around, you'll see there's mounting points at the end, mounting points on top and underneath. And if we spin this around, you'll see how we mount them. So essentially you've got holes there. There'll be holes underneath as well, where you mount the actual batteries and hold them in place. So now you've actually seen what we've actually done and what the plan is for these battery packs. Now it's time to see where they go in the car. So there's the front battery box in and uh, there's the fruit of our labor or, or my complexity, if you like. I definitely made the right decision because you know the original battery box was around about that height and now it's down here. It's actually exactly the same level as um, the original boot floor was because essentially in there was a spare wheel. That's now gone and that's in its place and the height is exactly spot on. So now the original carpet set will even fit directly in there. So that's all in there now. We've just got to um, finish off the cabling so that obviously the high voltage and stuff is already coming in. We've just got some ends to make off, coolant lines to cut and uh, make off, and then it'll be essentially time for this and the rest of the battery pack and motor mounts and everything to go off and get blasted and powder coated. But before we do that, I want to sh now show you the battery pack that goes in where the original petrol tanks went. So let's get this up on the, um, uh, on the lift and we'll get underneath the car. So this is the void I was talking about where the old petrol tanks used to go and the electrical guys have already been busy starting to do the high voltage routing so most of the uh, high voltage cables are already routed throughout the car and you know where you've got things like that hanging down if I grab these out of my pocket this is where uh, we're going to then join uh, the high voltage system into the battery boxes that I'm going to offer up so essentially if you imagine that cut to length and then you'll have 
like a plug on there and then there'll be a socket similar to this then on the battery pack so that when it's lifted in all the guys need to do is kind of like plug that on and job done so on that note glamorous assistant time we're going to lift um, this battery box into place and then you can see it in situ so uh, let's do that So there we go, it's all in place. Now, the advantages here are not just the fact that we've got the luggage space at the front back to standard, but weight distribution wise, we're going in the right direction because we've got that weight down nice and low and you can't get much lower than this, but also right slap bang in the middle of the car as well. So this will really help with the handling um, because the weight distribution has been improved. And, you know, as with all of our bills, we've had to, you know, install this around the infrastructure of the car. So the mounting points here, and here are exactly where the fuel tank mounting points were and pretty much the same weight as well. In fact, I think these are lighter than two, uh, two full fuel tanks because obviously there's two fuel tanks, not just one up there. So there we go. I think that's definitely the way to go. So battery packs there, small one at the front and a big one will just be here and then the Tesla motor there. So what else we got? I um, mean, the guys have uh, done all the air conditioning at the front as well, so that's all done. Um, the, you can see over to my right-hand side here, we've got the d d uh, DC to DC converter is in, some water pumps and things like that are in place as well. So the electrical guys have definitely been busy, and now they're actually um, to the stage where they're starting to make the loom boards up. So let's take a look at that. Now, you've seen lots of orange high voltage cable around, I'm sure, but you're probably wondering, where's all the low voltage control cabling uh, going? Well, that's what this box is in here. So we, what we've done, we've kind of cleverly got all of the low voltage coming into one junction box, which is this, and that just sits taking up this little bit of space here. So what I'm going to do now is going to take this out, and I'll take it to the bench, and we'll show you what goes into an innocent looking box like this. Right, now I brought it over to the bench because uh, you know, this is a fabrication marvel as well as an electrical marvel. I mean, there's a lot of fabrication that goes into little things like this because it's just so small and fiddly. But once it's done and compact and done right, it's such a, you know, a, a space saving solution for our uh, conversions because it's all in one place. But oh my God, is it complicated inside. So inside here, what we've got is essentially, well, some of the bits aren't even in there. So we've got everything from the CCS controller, um, what's that, the air conditioning uh, controller. This is the motor controller. There's also another box, oh, that can come out actually, here we go. There's also another controller that goes on there, which is controlling the dials, because essentially what we're doing, we're, we're converting um, can information to old-fashioned uh, analog information so that the Ferrari dials work. So there's another box that goes in there. Then up top here, we've got the VCU, and there's another device there. There's also a display. If I get that out before that drops out. So there's a display there, which um, tells us lots of information from a, um, an engineering support point of view. And then there's a big opening on this side, which is where all the um, fuses and relays and things that, um, you know, if something happens, you've got access to and can change the fuse out. Um, so, yeah, quite a complicated little compact box, this. And if I turn it up this way, these are all the connections that come in and out. So obviously you've got a... Um, 12 volt positive post and a, a ground post but in here there are looking at the loom board next to me here now 75 individual connections coming in here for everything from as I say CCS, ACU, uh, VCU, uh, the motor control system, uh, vacuum pump controllers, condenser co uh, uh, controllers, ignition, pff, the list goes on 75 connections in there if I put this down, Tim will have to get some pickups of this, but this is essentially the wiring diagram the guys have uh, uh, drawn up um, to enable them to essentially prepare this. This is all the relays here, relays, etc., etc. Fuses all up the top there, more relays there, control, control units down here, and then the pinouts. So what the guys have started to do now is make up the loom board. So if you want to move over here, Tim, you can see what we've 
been doing, I say we, I haven't been doing it, the electrical guys have, um, been doing the loom board so that they can do a repeat, 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 because don't forget, we've got four, possibly even now, a fifth Ferrari Testarossa to do. So it's worthwhile us actually doing loom boards. So let's have a look at that. So this window, if you like, here is the only bit that will be accessible once it's all in place. And that is essentially what this is here. So you've got all your fuses down there. You've got micro relays and stuff in, in here. And essentially, if you imagine that sitting kind of in there and then all of the plugs, in fact, if I turn it around, it'll be a little bit more clearer. All the plugs here then go down there. And then these are all the very custom and very different looking plugs that then go on to the various control units in the actual box. Um, so this is one the guys have done previously. So what they now have to do is build what's called a loom board. So if I move this out of the way, what a loom board is, is essentially a way that the guys can copy paste a finished one. So I'll get this on a board, which is in front of me here now, and then they'll kind of bolt it all in place and then they'll um, put various different pins, if you like, around the board to essentially replicate where these cables are supposed to go. And then, uh, once all the pins are in place, then they can also um, start drawing on the um, board what connector um, they're talking about and which, which wire, if, if you like, goes to which numbered pin. And that's essentially what we've got in front of me here now. So if Tim wants to zoom in, I can reference this board. So if you imagine that was there and then they pinned it all out, you can see all the little screws in place here and they've actually drawn around the actual individual plugs. So that is essentially that plug there and then that one there, that's that one there and so on and so forth. So what they're doing now, they've got a, a fresh fuse uh, board there or fuse and relay board. They've done all the individual wires and they started to bring them out now. So essentially what's this is going down to the CAN module down there. So that would go down there. Oh, oh, get in there. There we go. So that would go there. Uh, and there's a load of different little holes, say little, they're quite big actually, that have got the uh, um, main big um, plugs going into them there. So essentially that's what the guys are doing now. They're essentially replicating that over here. And if I grab another little, there we go. This kind of gives you an idea of how complicated it is. So essentially that is one of the main plugs and they've labeled it all up. And what they do is they put that in the hole there and then they'd get the length right and then they get that in there and then start putting it into the various different pinholes in the actual uh, relay and fuse box. So quite complicated, as I say, there's at least 75 pinouts and they've got them all listed out here and all down there as well. So uh, yeah, complicated, takes a bit of time up front to do it, but then in the long run to do repeatabilities, like we've got the Porsche 911 kit, the Mini kit, the Land Rover kit, et cetera, et cetera. All those kits um, are on loom boards so that then we can essentially build up with all the plugs in place, the right um, length of cable, a loom, low voltage and high voltage without needing the car here. So that that's why and how we can ship out kits around the world. So there you go, a lot of work just in a small box like that and we've got the rest of the car to do. So it's you know definitely stepping in the right direction but I can still see there's a marathon ahead of us. So hopefully in the next episode we're gonna have that in there and these full of batteries and hopefully all of this in this. So on that note, I hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see you on the next one.